Hey guys, Richard Oldner here. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for supporting the channel. Today it's all about big block Chevys. Did I mention it's about big block Chevys with boost? Did I mention it's thousand plus horsepower big block Chevys with boost? And why it takes more boost on some than others to make that power. In this video, we're going to take a look at three different turbocharged big block Chevy combinations, all of which exceed a thousand horsepower. We're going to demonstrate just how much boost is required on each combination to exceed that number. Now, is it better to run a mild combination with a lot of boost or a very wild combination with very little boost or maybe be somewhere in the middle. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda, I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember join us live 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. So we'll say three different methods of exceeding a thousand horsepower with turbo big blocks. I'm going to show you what it's like to start with a mild combination and then a kind of medium power combination, and then a high power NA combination, and how much boost we have to add to each one of those to actually exceed, you know, get into the four digit power level. So this was our first, actually the first big bang motor that I did. It was a Gen 5 454, so a four bolt block. It had a stock bottom end. All we did was take it apart and put a ring gap in it and and clean everything. We used a set of Brodex race right heads. We used a flat tappet comp extreme energy 268 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It was very, very, very mild. We used a YN Team G single plane intake and a Holly 950, way more carburetor than we need. We had a uh, crane uh, roller rockers on it and we ran our dyno headers on it and an MSD ignition get things started as you can see here from the end we also had a valve float issue we would later shim these springs up to help to help that situation i don't know if we cured it entirely but it didn't stop us from running boost on this run in uh natural aspirated trim our gen 5 you know our cam to big block with the brodex heads on it 441 horsepower and 477 foot pounds of torque very low compression on this uh, possibly less than eight to one, so it was pretty low. But here's what happens when we added eight pounds of boost, eight point three pounds. We added this is a twin turbo kit. We had two seventy-six millimeter turbos on it. They were from CX Racing. We had an air to water intercooler. We made shorty header our own custom kind of shorty turbo headers. And we had our dual turbo smart wastegates on it with seven pound springs, and we were controlling it with a manual boost controller. We had all of this blowing through a CSU uh, blow through carburetor, and it all worked pretty well. You know, 8.3 pounds, it was like 656 horsepower, torque was way up, 717. And then we just kept going up and up and up. So 8.3 pounds, this is 14 pounds. We were making 818 horsepower and 20 pounds where we got right at a thousand horsepower, a thousand two or a thousand three. And then the final runs were made at 29.7 pounds. So three bar of boosts and we exceeded a thousand by a pretty good bit, 1235. This was, I obviously you can look at the curves and see this was not an ideal combination. We had um, valve control issues. And we were making a lot more torque than we were horsepower. So what we needed really ideally would be a more powerful combination. But again, took us, uh, let's, let's use the thousand horsepower level here. Took us over 20 pounds, 20.7 pounds to get to a thousand horsepower with this combination. So now let's look at our second combination that started out with more power and that allowed us to bring the boost down. You can choose which method you'd like to use. Test motor number two was also a 454. This particular one was a Gen 6, and we had modified it again. It was a stock bottom end, a stock block crank rods, pistons. We put extra ring gap in it, and then we did upgrade the heads like we did with the Gen 5. This one had a set of 
Dart oval port 275 heads that were ported by Andy Mitchell. And we had, uh, because the thing originally came with a factory hydraulic roller cam, we, we replaced that stock camshaft with a custom one from Comp. It was a 561 lift, 233, 239, and 118 degree lobe separation angle. It had a 1.6 cast roller rockers on it. We ran uh, an Edelbrock Victor Jr. EFI intake manifold and ran this one fuel injected. We had, uh, we would eventually run a pair of S475 turbos and an air to water intercooler on this thing. And to give you an idea, this thing, when we ran this thing NA with the long tube headers and the MSD distributor, this thing made 510 horsepower and 497 foot pounds. As a comparison to the other 454, the Gen 5, you can see this one making a lot more NA power. And what we'll see is because we were making more NA power, it allowed us to reach any given power level at a fairly low boost level. So we ran first 8.8 uh, .8 pounds of boost, and that pushed us up to 785 horsepower. 12.4 pounds pushed us up even further at 885, and uh, torque was getting close to 900 foot-pounds. And then finally, 16.5 pounds pushed us over the 1,000 horsepower mark, 1,039, and we didn't run these turbos any farther than that. And I take that back. Well, on this particular combination, we didn't run S475s. We actually ran the inexpensive, um, we ran twin GT45 turbos, the low buck GT45 turbos, a pair of them. And so they'll support probably 14 or 1,500 horsepower, and 16 pounds is as high as we ran. But we were able to exceed 1,000 horsepower fairly easily at only 16 pounds and we needed remember about over 20 pounds to do it on the milder combination so it gives you an idea how much you gain from adding extra na power and how you can reach any given power level now at a lower boost level but here's the thing <laughs> the boost actually is free so if you have to make the upgrades to your na power those things cost you money, but turning the boost up is very easy. So the question is, which one of those would you rather do? Would you rather spend the money and make a more powerful NA combination, or would you rather just turn up the boost? So let's look at one final example. It's a little bit more extreme. We're going to go with a much bigger, much more powerful motor and see how much power or see how much boost that one takes to reach the thousand horsepower level. Our final big block example, we went up both in power and displacement. This was a 540 inch power adder crate motor from the guys at Blueprint Engines. And it's both an easy way to start and obviously going to be more, but it is going to be more expensive than your typical kind of junkyard upgrade motor, whether you get a Gen 5 or a Gen 6. That's a much less expensive way to go. But the crate motor obviously is easy. You just go buy it. It's already assembled. It's ready to go. And in this case, it makes obviously a lot of power. We, we ran the 540 crate motor with our long tube headers. We had to put the an intake manifold on it and a carburetor to run it na so we ran the um a y and team g intake manifold we uh played with the the oil level on this thing to get get it right it took a little bit of time to do that but once we ran this thing with a 950 poly carburetor the long tube headers and the msd the na power output 649 horsepower and 629 foot-pounds of torque. And to put this into perspective, we can take a look both at, at the, the Gen 5 and the Gen 6 454s that we ran. You can see, again, it's making a lot more power. It's making near 650 horsepower where the, our, our medium-sized motor was making 510 and then the smaller one was only making 441. So that should help in the boost department quite a bit so here's what happened when we ran a pair of turbos and on this one we ran the twin s475 as i mentioned previously in error on the on the medium sized motor that we actually ran the gt45s on but here's what happened when we ran just 10 pounds of boost on this bigger motor we were already way over a thousand horsepower in fact we were at we were getting close to 1100 horsepower we were at 1,080, so, you know, 
it was already making quite a bit of power. And I think that this is the lowest boost level that we started at. So otherwise I would have something lower that might actually make only a thousand horsepower. But even torque was a thousand and five foot pounds of torque. This thing made, because the motor was big, it made lots of torque NA and lots of power NA. It also made both of those under boost. It did, and it did very well. Eventually we would run as much as 15 and a half pounds on this thing. And it exceeded 1300 horsepower. Now there's um, obviously something to be said for having a big motor, having it be more powerful. It's easier to make boost, but if you remember back, this thing made over a thousand horsepower at 10 pounds. On our first 454, it took over 20 pounds to do that. And then on the, the Gen 6 motor, it took 16 and a half pounds. So as we go down, as we go up in our NA power, we're going down in the amount of boost that's required to reach any given power level. And this is a pretty good example. Again, that's not the whole story. It's nicer to make more power with less boost. And actually, I think that's always preferable because you're gonna have a lower charge temperature even with an intercooler and stuff and all that's going to be good. But it's more expensive because the more power you try to make out of the NA motor, the more power or the more money that you have to spend in doing so. The boost is free, but more power and less boost is always preferable. You get to decide. Let's get to our conclusion. I think we've proven once and for all that the only thing better than a big block Chevy is a twin turbo big block Chevy. That's right, we had three different combinations in this video going from mild to wild. And in our wild combination, we had a blueprint engine power adder crate motor. It had everything going for it. It had plenty of displacement at 540 cubic inches. It had decent cylinder heads, a good camshaft, an intake manifold, and that allowed the combination to make good NA power. Once we started adding boost, we got up to some pretty serious power levels. I mean, we easily exceeded a thousand horsepower at just 10 pounds of boost. And more importantly, you guys have to remember this, we also exceeded over a thousand foot pounds of torque. And what that's going to do is turn most drivetrains into shrapnel. So if you have a twin turbo big block that's already efficient, you're going to have to step up your drivetrain game. On the other side of that is our junkyard motor, whether it's a Mark IV, a Gen 5, or a Gen 6. Now, I like to add a cam, springs. I also like to upgrade ARP headsets and put good head gaskets in it, make sure you have enough fuel, turn the boost up, and you can also make a 1,000 horsepower. So which guy are you? Are you the dedicated build that makes lots of power? Are you the junkyard guy, or are you somewhere in the middle? Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.